What's up guys? So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the best Katarina runes in season 11. I'll be showing you every single rune page that I run in my challenger games. So the first one is gonna be this electrocute page. It's just, it's very well-rounded. It allows you to take short trades in lane. You have the sun impact, which will give you magic pen. Synergizes really well if you're going the proto belt build. That way you'll have lots of magic pen as the game goes on. You can also swap the sun impact out for taste of blood, depending if you want healing or not. I feel like eye blood collection is always the best since it synergizes really well with your champion and what you want to do, which is kill enemy champions, get takedowns pretty much. And then next we have Relentless Hunter. I feel like this is better overall than going Ravnus because roaming is crucial right now. I, I feel like I get so much more value out of this just because I get to leave my lane. You can get up to like 420, 25 movement speed once this is fully stacked, it's crazy. And if you combine Relentless Hunter with a, a 10 stack Magi's and a Lich Bane, which gives you 10% movement speed, you can get like well over 450 movement speed running around the map. So it's a very insane rune to take. And then secondary, a lot of Katarina players don't do this. I'm probably one of the only people that runs this in high elo. It's abs focus plus gathering a storm. So my ideology with Katarina is I like to play her as not so much a AOE assassin. I like to look to pick one person off and get out of the fight. That's my play style. I like to play like, like a hidden assassin. You know, I like to sit in a bush, look for one kill, shampoo out, rather than like going into like five people trying to pen to kill them. So that's what differentiates me from a lot of other Katarina players. They like to go triumph plus whatever because their play style is jumping into the middle of people, hoping you get reset so you can heal from your triumph. But I would rather have more AP, but I can one shot one person and get out safely. Also, what I like to do a lot of time is run Dark Harvest instead of Electrocute. This is more of a a advanced rune page to run because it feels like you don't have a keystone as you get into lane. Like this, this keystone does no damage early on. It's a scaling keystone. I've had a lot of games where I run Dark Harvest and I'll get like 20 kills in Challenger, but I've also had games where I'll die 20 times. So it's a high risk, high reward keystone, but I like it a lot. It works with my play style, but it's just up to you if you would rather go Electrocute or Dark Harvest, depending on your play style. Once again, same thing, you can, you can choose to go Taste of Blood over Sun Impact, but I, I don't like to do that. I feel like Ra Relentless is a lot better than Ravenous too. But this is a, a room page that I am very comfortable with. Next, we have the Conqueror page. This is very common too. I will run this almost all the time if I'm versing tanks or bruisers in general, or if I'm versing a laner that I can't burst down with Electrocute. For example, a Silas or uh, a Gwen. I feel like this is just better overall because you can take extended trades with them. This is also the rune page that you would run if you were to go AD Katarina. So to start this page off, we have the Conquer. It synergizes really well with everything in your kits. It synergizes really well with the AP on hit build, Nasher's Riftmaker. It just has everything that you need. It has healing and it stacks up very, very fast. It literally stacks up so fast in your R. It's OP. Next, we have Triumph for resets and team fights. And then we have Legend Tenacity, of course, if they have CC. You can also decide to go Legend Alacrity if they don't have any CC. I would never, I, I wouldn't ever take Bloodline. I feel like this is very useless on Katarina. So I would just say Tenacity or Alacrity. Next, you can go Last Stand. I would never say go this. Sometimes I will go Cut Down if they have tanks, but for the most part, it's gonna be Last Stand. And for our secondary tree, we have Sun Impact and Ravenous Hunter. Again, you can swap around a lot of things here. You can go for Taste of blood instead of sun impact if you feel you need some healing in lane and you can also go relentless hunter instead of ravenous hunter if you feel like you want to roam but just because we're going nasher's rift maker i feel like it just makes sense to go ravenous hunter so that we have some more healing and if you're running conquer you can also run resolve secondary you would only run resolve secondary if you're versing either assassins or control mages if you're versing assassins you run bone plating if you're versing control mages you would run second wind and keep in mind, when I say control mages, I'm only talking about the ones that will poke you really hard, like Azir or Oriana. So you can run either second win or bone plating, and then you can choose one of these three. So overgrowth would just be overall the best one to pick. You would just pick this almost every game if you run resolve secondary. It gives you lots of HP. Once it's fully stacked, you're gonna have around 150 health from it, which is equivalent to one ruby crystal. I like to view this rune as 400 gold value. 
And then next we have Revitalize. The only time you would take this is if your team has lots of healers or shielders. So if I were to have an Ivern jungle or a Lulu support or a Janna support, then I would probably take this. And then next, this is like my favorite rune to take when I go resolve. Unflinching. It gives you lots of tenacity and slow resist. So if you combine Legend Tenacity plus Unflinching, I like to think of Unflinching as Merc Treads so that I don't have to build my Merc Treads. I'm going to get 51% tenacity from these two runes combined if I fall to 30% HP. So this is useful for if I want to build either Ninja Tobi and they still have CC or if I want to go Sword Shoes and they still have lots of CC because sometimes I will run Conqueror and I will go Proto Belt so I can have Magic Pen. So it's just good for me to have Unflinching for extra tenacity if I'm going a Magic Pen build with this. And keep in mind guys, I've shown you every single room page that I run, but you can change things to your own play style. You shouldn't just copy every single thing I do, you should figure out your preferences. That's the, that's the great thing about Katarina. Every single game is different. Every situation is different. So you can choose based on the situation or based on your play style. So whether it be like swapping around things on your primary tree, like going for Sun Impact over Taste of Blood or Ravenous Hunter over Relentless Hunter. But most of the time, the secondary tree is very situational. You should never be running just one tree every single game. Like you shouldn't be running Precision every single game. You should be looking at the situation and trying to figure out what rune tree is best to take secondary, whether it be resolve or precision or sorcery. But there's a lot of things you have to factor in. Like I said, it could be the enemy team comp, it could be your team comp, it could be your play style or just preference. I haven't yet went over the very minor runes down here. These are also situational, of course. Some games I like to go one adaptive, one armor, one MR. It's just very well-rounded. I would usually take this if I'm versing either a hybrid champion in mid lane. So that would be Orianna, for example, because a lot of her damage comes from her auto attacks, which are both AD and AP. Or if I'm versing an AP mid and an AD jungle or vice versa. Of course, you would go double armor plus one adaptive if you're versing double AD mid jungle. And same thing if you were to be versing double AP, you would go double MR. Some games, it is good to go attack speed. You only go this if you were versing someone that you wanted to fight a lot early. Like if you were to be going an AD build with Conqueror, then you, you might want to run attack speed just so you can auto attack faster in the early game. One thing I haven't went over yet in this video is Inspiration. The Inspiration tree is pretty useless nowadays for Katarina. It used to be really good like last season, but this season, I don't think there's really a reason to run anything in here. I mean, if you wanted, you could probably go for Magical Footwear plus Futures Market, or maybe Cosmic Insight if you're running TP. But for now, let's just say Inspiration's out of the question. Like we, we only want to run Precision, Sorcery, and Resolve. I hope that this room page guide was helpful. I will be uploading an item guide in the future as well. So be on the lookout for that. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Peace.